John, uh, another Group 1, uh, oh so close last time. You'd like to think uh, you can go one better this time around? Yeah, look, the filly's in good shape. She didn't have much luck there the other day from a wide barrier. But uh, back to her own own age, set weights, uh, she's drawn a nice gate to get a, to get a good run this time. So, um, you know, uh, all things point to a, to a good run. You, it was always a question of whether she went to the 2,000 or stuck around the mile distances. Um, was there much debate or thought process going into that or was it always going to be the 2,000 in your mind? Um, no, it was all hinging on the Coolmore. Uh, obviously she didn't win that so that cost her a penalty in the Doncaster so we didn't get a run there. Uh, she still might but um, we couldn't um, rest on our laurels there. We had to run again so went to the 2000 which we did want to test her out this preparation so we know what we're aiming at uh, in the spring but um, I don't have too many worries about it. Uh, she's fit and well and um, you know, she relax, relaxes very well in a run so uh, you would think uh, she would get it with no problem at all but uh, she's still got to do it on Saturday. And, and, and so the Doncaster is still not out of the picture if you can get a run? Well, uh, we'll, the first things first, we'll get through Saturday, but if she went and won well Saturday, uh, you know, the owners might want to accept and see if she gets in, but uh, we'll, yeah, we'll leave that to them after, after the weekend. I know that uh, is a pie in the sky, is there any hope that if she misses out in the Doncaster, you'd stretch it out against the older horses in, in a race like the Queen Elizabeth, or is that completely out of the question? No, she'll go to the Queen of the Turf if, uh, if she doesn't go to the Doncaster, but um, at this stage it looks like Vinery Queen of the Turf, yeah. The pressure uh, obviously was uh, enormous for uh, yourself going into the race, but um, the, the decided to change the jockey, the ownership have decided to change the jockey. That must have been a bit tough. Yeah, um, you know, they, they were unhappy with his ride first up where she got beat. Um, you know, he didn't do a lot wrong the other day, but he's, he's just riding a, a little bit impatient. Impatient, sorry. Um, so they elected to change. Um, we're losing nothing putting James on. So uh, he's been on a three times uh, in the last week, and um, yeah, he's even offered to come and canter. So <laughs> obviously, he's, she's given him a good feel, and uh, he's quite confident going into Saturday. I suppose we forget that sometimes, you know, obviously you've got to stick thick with a lot of jockeys, but at the end of the day, you're a coach of a, a team effectively, and if it's not working, you've got to put the 5 8 out to the wing or the fullback in the centre. You've got to mix them, mix them around a bit. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, Blake's a good jockey, everybody knows that, but, um, you know, he's, we just uh, weren't having much luck. A um, couple of little things didn't go our way, and uh, we're one from three this prep when we probably could have been three from three, so. Um, the owners had a discussion and, and wanted the change, so that's what we've done. You're flying the flag for Australia on a weekend where the Kiwis are coming to get us both in racing, cricket and anything else they can get their hands on. Uh, uh, it'd be nice to get one up for the Australians across the weekend. Uh, for sure. Um, yeah, no, she's, she's going well. We're confident. So, um, yeah, no, it'd, it'd be a good weekend, but I don't think we've got too much to worry about as far as the Kiwis are concerned. <laughs>